DNS converts user-friendly domain names to computer-friendly IP addresses. So when you browse to www.brady.life in your web browser, in the background, your computer is going to resolve that to an IP address. It first checks its host file and its local DNS cache uh, to see if it's been there before and doesn't have to look up this name again. If those aren't in the cache or host file, it's going to forward that request to the default DNS device in your network. In a home network, this will be your Wi-Fi router. And it wants to know who is www.brady.life. So send this over UDP port 53. Your Wi-Fi router will check its DNS cache, see if it has any records. If it doesn't, it's going to forward it to the next DNS device a recursive resolver in your home network, unless you've changed the configuration on your Wi-Fi router, this is going to be your ISP. So we're asking, who is www.brady.life? And the recursive resolver is going to check. Uh, and in this instance, it doesn't have that information cached. It doesn't even know the .life top level domain. So that recursive resolver is going to work its way down the chain. It's going to start with a root hint server. It's going to ask, hey, root hint server, who is dot life. I don't know that top level domain. And the root hint server is going to respond back and it's going to say, hey, the dot life top level domain is at 37209192.7. Recursive crawler is going to say thanks. It's going to cache that record for the top level domain. Then it's going to send a request to dot life. Hey, who is Brady? And the uh, top level domain, because my domain is registered with them, with uh, donuts.domains, it'll respond back he, uh, the start of authority for Brady.life is 52.218.201.99. And this is a AWS server because I have them as my start of authority hosting the DNS records for my domain. Okay, so now the recursive resolver is going to go to my start of authority, that DNS server, and ask, hey, where is www? And my uh, start of authority, my domain server, is going to respond uh, and let you know, hey, uh, www. Dot Brady dot life. The A record for that, uh, that's at 54.231.169.71. And now the recursive resolver is going to cache that record. So if anyone else asks, it already has the answer. A default period is 72 hours. It's going to respond back to the Wi-Fi router, letting the Wi-Fi router, hey, uh, this is this is where www.brady.life is. Your Wi-Fi router, your DNS device will cache it. Then it'll forward it to your computer, who will also cache this record locally. And now your computer can use that to browse to www.brady.life. It'll do an HTTP GET request, and the server will respond with the web page. I have a really cool domain name. I'm sure a lot of people want it. If they're going to steal it, they might try domain hijacking, gaining illegitimate control of my domain name. This could be a vulnerability with my domain registrar, uh, but more likely it's going to be social engineering of either myself, the site owner, of the domain registrar to gain access to my account that controls this domain. This could be convincing customer service of the domain registrar that they are in fact me and they need them to reset the password uh, or convincing me that they are the domain registrar and, and somehow getting me to give up this password or uh, sending me a phishing email, I click on it uh, and type in my password on their website instead of the actual domain registrar's site. Or perhaps they gain access to uh, the owner's email uh, and if they have access to the email, they can reset the domain account password, and uh, that reset would likely come to my email in most circumstances. Or by physical force, my favorite example, with a gun. Doitforstate.com was apparently a popular domain in Iowa, and the perpetrator went to the site owner's house, um, got their address, and threatened them at gunpoint and forced them to turn over that domain to them. When they got to asking for the address instead of just asking, hey, uh, I want to protect my privacy. That's an option with most registrars. Let's use the registrar's address. Uh, they got in a struggle and both parties were shot and the perpetrator was sentenced to 20 years in jail. How can you defend yourself against domain hijacking? Uh, you could register your domain with a reputative vendor. This is to avoid vulnerabilities in the registrar system and the susceptibility of the registrar to social engineering or their... Uh, customer service representatives' uh, susceptibility to social engineering. You also, if supported, should use two-factor authentication to uh, re uh, to protect the account that you use to register your domain. And uh, one of your most important accounts is the email account that all is used for 
all of these various sites that you have. Uh, so use two-factor authentication for your email if it's supported. Let's go to our previous example and add in DNS cache poisoning. So you want to go to Brady.live. It's not in your host file. It's not in your cache. This gets forwarded to your DNS device, your router, forwards it to the recursive resolver. And what I didn't mention last time is each of these quests has a ID field into it. It's 2 to the 16, a uh, 16-bit field uh, with an ID for this request. So it gets the recursive resolver, and here we actually have a race condition. So my attacker uh, could flood my resolver with replies uh, saying, hey, www.braided.life is actually at 192.168.168.10. Uh, and my recursive resolver might accept this input. And if it does, it'll respond back and let the Wi-Fi router know, hey, uh, www.braided.life is at 192.168.168.10. Okay, great, great. And now my computer is going to browse to this malicious site. Now, this is a race condition because if uh, the star of authority responds first, uh, that record will be cached, and my attacker uh, will not be able to poison the cache until that record expires. If we're the attacker, we don't want this to be a fair race. We can give ourselves the advantage by asking the question ourselves, who is www.brady.life? And then we're going to flood the recursive resolver with responses. And if we have enough responses, we're going to guess the ID correctly and poison the cache so that when your computer asks who is brady.life, forwards it to the router, forwards it to the recursive resolver. The recursive resolver already has this answer cached and instantly responds. And now our computer is again going to go to this malicious site instead of the legitimate site. If I'm the attacker, when I poison the A record uh, for www.braided.life and redirect that to the malicious site, I have controlled a single site. But I'd like to control the entire brady.life domain. And I can do this using the Kaminsky DNS cache poisoning attack. So again, I'm sending my DNS request. I'm asking who is www.brady.life. Maybe I'll ask who is 1.brady.life. Who is 2? Who is 3? So I'll generate all these A record requests. But when I'm flooding the recursive resolver with my responses, trying to correctly guess the right ID, I'm not going to include just an A record response. I'm also going to include an NS response. And I'm going to say, hey, the name server for Brady.life, it's not 52.218.201.99. It's actually my militia site, 192.168.168.10. And if the recursive resolver caches uh, that name server, now if your computer asks for any resource on Brady.life, maybe email, .brady.life, if that was one of my subdomains. And that gets the recursive resolver. The recursive resolver is actually going to forward it out to my malicious server for the malicious server to respond to the recursive resolver where that resource is located since it's cached that. So I can redirect any requests to the Brady.life domain to a domain I control instead of the legitimate site. What's the difference between DNS cache poisoning and domain hijacking? Well, in DNS cache poisoning, we are only targeting this recursive resolver and subscribers of that recursive resolver. So if this is an ISP, it's only other users in that local area. If you're targeting a company's internal network, it is only the company internal users. The domain owner and other users at large will not be affected and will not observe this impact. Whereas if we're doing domain hijacking, we are targeting the actual domain and its registration. So the site owner will know they've been targeted and this will impact all users of the site. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe and check out some of my other videos.